Hello and welcome. This is Ageless John teaching another Android Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be starting with working with SQL Lite and Android. One of the things I want to point out first of all is that it would be nice and extremely useful <laughs> if you had some basic understanding of how databases work. Um, that is something that you're going to find uh, invaluable when you're working with SQL Lite. Uh, SQL not necessarily necessary that you be able to understand SQL so much but that would be helpful but just a uh, traditional standard database course or YouTube video explaining the basics period would be helpful uh, one of the things that we're going to pick up really quickly is uh, the SQL database uh, uses a schema and it's a schema is a formal declaration of how the database is organized and we're going to look at that real quick because I find it important that when you're creating databases that you be able to write them out and plan them in advance. This, for instance, is a schema where you've got the fields, uh, the ID and name and address, the types that are going to be used in those fields, and then which one's the key. That's basically what a schema is. And I've got another example here. Um, it just outlines what your database is going to look like. And that way, when you're programming, you can actually add more to this as you go along uh, so that you'll be able to keep track of the different floating pieces as you're programming. While this tutorial does deal with saving and transporting information and data, I'd like to point out that I have several other tutorials. I think uh, 14, Toast and Saving Data Part 1, 15 and 16, and then 47, Bundle, Extra and Intent, Data Transfer and then uh, there's also some other bits and pieces here, but those are the major ones. Uh, and if you're not actually looking to work with SQL Lite, those may be uh, more apt to be useful to you. SQL, not necessarily necessary that you be able to understand SQL so much, but that would be helpful. But just a uh, traditional standard database course or YouTube video explaining the basics period would be helpful. Their Android Studio site suggests that many of us would find it helpful to create a companion class in which they call a contract class and what this contract class does it explicitly uh, specifies the layout uh, of your schema which we've already talked about and it does it in what's in a systematic way uh, and it also does it in such a way that it's uh, self-documenting. Now, contract class um, basically serves as a container for uh, constants that uh, define the different aspects of your database, for instance, tables and columns. The contract class allows you to use the same constants across all other classes in the same package in your app. Uh, this lets you change a column name in one place and have it uh, propagate throughout your, co your, your entire code. Uh, so it's very useful. Okay, now once you've defined your database uh, and how it looks like through your contact contract class, next you need to implement methods that create and maintain the database and the tables. Now Android um, stores your database in a private disk space associated only with your application. Your data is safe because by default no other application can access or modify your database. Some of the familiar things that you're going to see a lot of uh, when working with SQLite are um, on create, on upgrade, um, on open, call, uh, these callback methods, and as well as something called on downgrade. At some point, you're going to have to uh, be able to gain access to your database after you create it. In order to do this, you're going to need to instantiate your subclass of uh, your SQLite open helper. Uh, for instance, in this situation, I've created this. Uh, this this database and this public class and it's instantiated over here at db helper equals new sqld database helper context now if you want to put things into your data database you have to be able to change your database over to the right mode and if you'll notice immediately under here i have this database equals db helper period get writable database and this will put my database into write mode next we're gonna look down here because we need to use content values right here content values equals new content values uh, then we're going to use the put for the values 
for instance, content values dot put SQL database helper dot name, common name, and we do the same thing for the address and for the uh, table name. Not only is the database helper initialized in the DB Manager class, but here you will find the DB Manager class also performs all the database CRUD operations, and those operations are create, read, update, and delete. And I don't know if it's pronounced CRUD or CRUD. I'm just saying CRUD because it's more fun to say. All right, before we leave, I want to look real quick at the manifest. And if you'll see here, I've got this uh, notated out, uh, use permissions. And the reason that is, is uh, used to, you had to include that. But you don't really have to anymore, depending on your situation. Uh, if you need to both read and write files, then you'll need to. Um, have the right external storage permissions um, because it it requires a read access as well um, but beginning with Android 4.4 these permissions are not required if you're reading and writing only files that are private to your app uh, so if these these files are only going to be used in your app which in this instance they are and your Android is 4.4 or higher you don't need to do this um, but I just left it there so that you could see that if there was some sort of problem, that might be um, one of the reasons why. You just add that in and see if it helped fix it. Thanks, John. I want to thank you for joining me. Um, I've got some more videos coming up on the SQL Lite and Android Studio. Uh, stay tuned. And uh, thank you for joining me. I hope this has been a little bit useful, and I hope you've learned something. And until then, I'll see you around.